So this is a new project I'm going to start on. It's a Grimori. I think that's how you pronounce it. Not bad for $16. Now I already kind of opened up some of these parts. What I noticed about this new kit is um, it's matte finish. Usually your Bandai plastic is this you know glossy crap here, but this is kind of interesting that you know it's got a matte finish to this. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to build and sand the kit. I already see that this needs to be seen together. So let's take care of this now. So now that I've um, had the day for this to cure, all these seam lines here are now solid. So I put this little guy together and um, a little experiment with my camera work now is I could do a two camera shoot, one straight up, just looking at it and kind of you know getting rough ideas of what I want to do. The arms definitely want to do something with these arms, so I'm going to grab some uh, putty. Nah. How this works is these two pieces uh, mix together and you get a... Uh, it'll solidify. So let's get my... And just kind of mix this stuff together. This stuff gets kind of sticky, so I'm going to get a small glass of water. So once this mixed together, you should be able to see that 
it's a uniform color you don't have any more white or brown this is kind of gray greenish color and the warmer it is the easier it is to kind of work with it's going to be a little sticky so what I want to do is I want to just apply it to these arms here I should have applied water to that another idea is to kind of rough up the surface a little bit take a low grit sanding stick one here kind of rough up the edges. I don't really care about the surface because I'm covering over it. I also want to get rid of all that plastic dust. So now the surface is a little roughed up. I'm start applying my putty to the surface. So, I'm just going to just kind of roughly cover it now, and I'll go in and Shape and apply some sculpting to it in a bit. So now it's you know kind of covered. Let me get a skewer so I can hold this up, not have it drop all over the place. Maybe this is not the best skewer. This is a better skewer. And it's not really sticking well to the surface. Take my sanding stick, rough it up a little bit. My hands are already kind of sticky from this stuff. Some people do recommend using gloves when you're handling this. Uh, it may cause skin irritation. Put that down, get back to this guy. Now I'm just going to take this, just put some folds into this. Now I'm just doing it roughly. Because I'll sand this and smooth this out at a later time. Also, using gonna use this to get rid of any of the excess that I'm gonna push up. sticking to a plastic as well as I was hoping.
so I hope it sort of makes sense what I'm trying to do here. As I'm trying to create that kind of cloth like covering for this guy. For this joint. Similar to how the Alex NT1 has this cloth covering over its joint areas and its shoulders. So something like this is basically a, a rough cut of. Uh, Backpack definitely needs some adjustments. I'm thinking maybe a fuel tank. It's kind of this big bulky thing. Maybe some thruster bells. Maybe a fuel tank that comes out to here. Add a little ball, a little joint here, so we get to swivel a little bit. So this is basically how I'm going to connect the fuel tank is with this ball and socket joint covered up by a little piece of styrene. Pretty simple. Now I just got to get the rest of this you know, made it together and this should work just fine. adding the fuel tanks. Just drilled out a couple of holes, added some poly caps inside here, 
added a little um, collar around the poly cap, glued that into place, and basically you just created a fuel tank out of uh, styrene. And once in place, these fuel tanks can actually move around. Right now, this is about the point where I'm going to stop making the modifications and start uh, actually sanding the kit and getting this ready for uh, paint. What I'm going to do is I'll go over some of the mods that I've done to this piece by piece. We'll start with, you know, shoulder. And um, what I did here was use some epoxy putty and basically shaped out um, kind of a wrap. So this is kind of similar to the wrap that's on the shoulders of uh, Pat Labor kits or even the NT1, the shoulder wrap thing. I had some extra putty so I end, ended up just puttying the shoulder. And I'm gonna have to reshape this and just round this out uh, just to have a bigger shoulder piece. Uh, the forearms, I added um, a little piece of um, from the Gundam hammer. The gun slightly modified, adding a little piece of brass tubing pl uh, and a plastic tube to sort of create a you know silencer. And over here, I felt this was a little boring for uh, this this round piece, so I added some styrene uh, tubing. And at the end of it, uh, this is the bottom of a camphor mine that I used here as a little bit of detailing. And that's pretty much all I did for the gun. Uh, this Grimori came with a knife, and it didn't really come with a sheath for the knife. So what I did was I found an extra excess part, trimmed it down a little bit, and it works decently as a sheath for uh, the Grimori's knife. The backpack was pretty plain and boring to me. So I ended up chopping bits and pieces of it. I removed the antenna piece here. I didn't like the antenna on the on the backpack. I, I drilled holes here, drilled holes here, and basically added, to, originally this was going to be a ammo pack, but ended up turning into a sort of a little rocket launcher. Um, this part is from the Zaku, uh, just the leg mine. So again, I added the Gundam hammer pieces here. And I created a little bit of a Gatling gun. Uh, using spare parts from random Gundam part, uh, leftover pieces. This piece right here is from a Galgoog. I think it's a backpack. This piece right here is the side of a, a core booster from the Gundam War One Year War kit. I cut off a part of this um, circle piece here and glued it onto the back of here. So this was all. This will all get puttied and cleaned up considerably. Right here is just a piece from the G Gundam Bazooka. I'm using as a kind of shoulder uh, rest. And the Gatling gun, I decided to go with a stationary Gatling gun versus a spinning Gatling gun where the tubes would be all the same height. Uh, tubes are in a se uh, separate height, so you know eff effectively it'd just be firing out of these stationary. And this is all just built from tubes of styrene. I created a little uh, grenade launcher piece for the to fit in here, and once I putty all that up, this should look uh, a little bit more yeah, uniform. Didn't do much with the uh, the upper torso piece. Just added some uh, veneers here and just glued those in, into place. These were off of some random GM kit I found. Now, the his belly part I didn't really like just the plain brown belly, so I cut that out and I added the bottom of a uh, camphor mine right there as you know, just a piece that sticks out. I kind of wanted some throwing knives, so what I did first was I glued in a piece of styrene uh, detail. I created a 
little sheath of sorts using a little bit of a styrene rod right in the middle and this is a piece off of the Z Zulu and it seemed to work perfectly for for uh, these little daggers and these daggers I I created from uh, just 3d printing them so I have uh, let's clean these up a little bit and I 3d printed uh, four of several of these and this is my little throwing knives so to speak for the legs I thought this was a little bit of a squat unit so what I did is if you look in here I added um, a layer of styrene I basically cut this in half uh, glued some styrene on there maybe about a uh, millimeter two millimeters thick and uh, what I did was I sanded this down and primed this to check against mistakes this basically extended the leg ever so slightly so it doesn't look as a squat uh, last bit of detail on the side of the legs I added uh, more of these veneers that I added all over the place and this is pretty much all I did for this kit now I gotta go and sand everything and get everything ready for uh, painting.